What's up, everybody? We are back, and we are excited. The Packers rookies report to training camp on Friday, which will be tomorrow um, when this video uploads finally. So I'm excited. I know you guys are all excited. There is a lot to look for and a lot of players that we can't wait to see how they do, basically. Um, Packers had two first round picks and a very early second round pick. Uh, Christian Watson was the 34th pick. So we had Quay Walker, Devontae Wyatt, and then Christian Watson all on the top, like 34. I think we had 22, 26, or, and then 34. So, um, yeah, a lot, to, a lot to be excited about for Packers fans. Um, I'm pumped. Uh, I know Quay Walker has kind of already beat out Chris Barnes um, for that second inside linebacker spot behind Devondre Campbell. Campbell was in All-Pro last year, so he's the lock to be the starting guy. But then to have a guy like Walker, who is big and fast and physical and at 6'3 and can move, um, to learn from Campbell and to be behind him, it's going to be exciting to see what Walker can do. I heard reports earlier that he had said something about how it's, you know, it's a lot really quickly in the NFL. You have to learn so much. You have to really be ahead of the game. But um, I don't think he's going to have an issue with that at all. So I'm excited to see Quay. Um, it's going to be cool to see number seven out there on the defense on the Packers. And I look for him to be making a lot of plays. Um, then his, his teammate from Georgia. Uh, we got two Georgia guys in the first round. And we got Eric Stokes last year from Georgia, which is pretty crazy. So Devontae Wyatt was, you know, the kind of the second defensive tackle to um, to Davis, the big 6'6", 340-pound guy that ran like a 4'5 at the <laughs> ran like a 4'5 at the combine. But Devontae Wyatt, on film, he almost looked more explosive, like more of a dominant player. Um, he is 24, so he's you know he's ready. He's football ready. He's NFL ready. Um, he's got the talent. He's got the speed. He's you know he can be really disruptive in the pass, and be dominant against the run. I just I'm excited to see him play. Uh, next to Kenny Clark, there's a lot of opportunity to have one guy block you. You know have one to one on one and be able to beat him. You know. So I look for him to really kind of dominate this year. He'll have to beat out Jaron Reed, but he, I think he's already kind of done that. I think they said that like during OTAs or whatever. Um, I think he's already kind of in that second spot. So we'll see how it progresses. Um, like the veterans count, uh, report to camp next Wednesday. So the rookies will have a few days and we'll be able to see what they can kind of do and then when it really starts is when everybody shows up and that's when the fun really begins so um i look for wyatt to have a productive rookie season you know um obviously learning curves and growing pains and such but i think he will be good this year right away um then yeah christian watson number 30 uh, the 34th pick he's a uh, Six four and a half, <laughs> I'll give him because I saw six five. I see six four. He's probably somewhere in the middle. Big big kid, rare rare combination of size, speed, athleticism. You know he came out of North Dakota State, so it's in you know kind of a smaller school, but the way their offense plays is kind of a pro style offense. You know the receivers have to block in the running game and be able to run downfield and stretch the field and everything so Watson is a guy that can do all that um Packers lost Marquez Valdez Scantling obviously he went to the Chiefs so having Christian Watson is a guy that can come in right away and kind of play that role if you can start catching those the ones that MVS dropped um I think Watson can really be productive right away for the Packers he doesn't have to come in and be the guy right away. There's guys around him. Lazard hopefully can step up and really be that solid number one. Randall Cobb's a solid, you know, just slot guy. He's got that rapport with Rodgers. And then if Sammy Watkins can do anything, um, 
it would be huge for the Packers. We just we just kind of need a wide receiver by committee this year when it comes to replacing Devonte Adams. So Watson's gonna play a big part in that. Um, being drafted so high, there's other guys that went in the first round that the Packers could have traded their two picks and get traded up for, but they stayed solid. They they got two really solid defensive players, the one you know White and and Walker, and we're still able to get a really top quality receiver in the draft. They traded two of their uh, later second round picks for an earlier second round pick. And I actually was surprised that the 53, the 53rd pick and the 59th pick, the ones that we traded, equaled a 34th pick, but it did. So we got Watson, and we will see how that um, ends up for the Packers this year. I really think he can be good, um, even if he kind of does that MVS role where he only gets a few balls a game. If they're deep ones and he can catch them and he's got his guy beat, they're going for six, so I am excited to see him and uh, see if Rodgers and him can get on the same page early on in camp. A guy who, see, the Packers have offensive line questions. I won't say issues. I'll say questions because Bakhtiari's knee, you know, he, he's a big guy. He's been in the league for a long time. We want to make sure his knee is 100% healthy. Elkin Jenkins, again, coming off his ACL, just like Bakhtiari. We need to make sure he is completely healthy. Both guys, you know, all pro talent, can will probably be in the Pro Bowl if they play all season. And whatever position, you know, box that left tackle, but whatever position Elkin Jenkins plays, left guard or right tackle, that's that position is pretty much solidified. It's filling in the gaps where those two guys don't play. So basically three spots. I think Josh Wells will have the center position pretty much locked up. So that leaves, you know, right guard basically, and then whatever position Jenkins does not play, right tackle or left guard. I think he'd probably go back to left guard, so right tackle and, and right guard would be open, so that side. And we got, I did not think we were going to get him. I really thought he'd be off the board by the time the Packers drafted again in the third round. But Oh, Sean Ryan out of UCLA, probably the best run-blocking offensive lineman in the whole draft. 320 pounds, quick, agile, you know, pretty, <laughs> pretty dominant playing playing in the Pac-12 last year. Um, he just he really is a guy that can come in right away as a rookie and um, and be dominant. Um, He's he's got some competition, obviously. Royce Newman, um, John Runyon Jr. They're going to come in and they're going to want to play again because they played so much last year. So they're going to they're all going to be competing basically for the same two spots. Ryan, just the guy that I think can come in right away, grab that spot, and hold it for the for the Packers for the next ten years as long as he can stay healthy. He's just a really really solid player. I look for him to come in right away be you know up to speed in camp and just do everything that the, the Packers ask of him and really contribute right away I I think it's such a solid pick for the Packers I really do watch for him to be around for a while another guy that really the pack as soon as the Packers drafted him I started hearing him talk and he wanted to be a, a starter at all five positions in the NFL while he's starting capable at all five positions just obviously the more that you can do the more valuable you are and so Zach Tom out of Wake Forest he basically dominated at left tackle and center during his time at Wake Forest he's you know he's got the right size smarts athleticism toughness to really do a good job um, at any position they put him at I want to see how they move him around see where he can actually go if he can play left tackle that's huge and then anywhere else, you know, if you can play left tackle, you can probably play anywhere else, really. But that left tackle spot, you know, you can never have too many solid, solid players at that position. So, um, and you know, center, too, obviously, if, if Wells goes down. He was down for most of the year last year. And so if a guy like Zach Tom can come in and pretty much be that backup at any position that we need him to be, that would be huge. Um, the Jets drafted Jermaine Johnson, I think, that was like the 20s, you know, late 20th, 28th pick maybe. And 
<laughs> uh, Zach Tom shut him down. You know, head to head, first round pick. Out of, you know, out of Florida State, Jer- Jermaine Johnson. He's gonna be probably a beast in the NFL. He should have went like top ten, but he fell. He kept dropping and kept dropping. But anyway, that's kind of Zach Tom's claim to fame was being able to shut him down. Um, pretty cool. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think Tom. You know, the Packers have so many good offensive linemen right now. There's, you know, Royce Newman played a lot of snaps, like I said, in, in Runyon. And then Yash, even. So any guys like, any guys like Zach Tom and, and Sean Ryan are just going to really contribute to all those guys getting better because they're just going to compete and all want to, you know, be their best. So very cool. Very cool to see. Um it's all you know. You can never have too many good offense alignment, especially when you're trying to block for 12. Um, giving giving him time to throw, or you know, more than he needs to throw, because that's what Rodgers does makes you know makes plays happen. It just leads to leads to big things for the Packers. So I'm excited as long as you know the Packers have a solid offensive line. I think good things will happen in the run game and the pass game, and then uh, the defense will will hold their own for sure this year. I'm excited about the D. So. Another guy that I really think is going to be someone to watch when camp starts for the rookies is Romeo Dobbs. Um, drafted out of Nevada, fourth round. He got 225 total passes and finished with back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. You know, that's you know that's crazy for any guy, even, especially in college, because, you know, they don't play as many games, and 225 total passes, that's... <laughs> That's a lot. You know, he, he did have Carson Strong, you know, so it does help to have a quarterback that can play. But Rodgers is <laughs> light years ahead of that. So a guy like Dobbs, who's 6'2", I think he's like 2'10", 2'15", or so, which is basically what Adams is. Um, his just body type, his route running, not as polished as Adams, but... He moves his feet, he uses his head, he uses his body a little bit more with his hands, but he can get downfield, he's got the speed to get over the top. I think Dobbs is going to be a guy that comes in right away, gains Rodgers' trust, and kind of, you know, ends up being that guy that Rodgers looks to is, is kind of that Devontae role. Um, I don't know if Lazard's able to step up and be a solid number one. I think we're going to have a lot of, like, number twos and threes, but I look for Dobbs to kind of be that guy that, that takes that biggest rookie receiver jump, at least, out of the three that we have um, with uh, Christian Watson and Samari Tor. There's, you know, we drafted guys later on that all, I think, in the in the draft that I think can all contribute. Um, outside linebacker is going to be a position behind Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary that we're going to be looking for for their rep- or not replacement, their backups. <laughs> so we're going to need guys that can come in and kind of spell them so they can get a breather, take take a break, you know, get fresh for downs that they're needed, like third down or, you know, obvious passing situations. So you need guys that can come in and be productive, you know, put pressure on the quarterback, you know, wreak havoc, cause, cause issues for the, the opposing offense. So... Packers went out and drafted a guy, Kingsley and Agbar, JJ and Agbar. Um, I think he's gonna be able to come in. His, they gave him um, number 55, so old uh, Zadaria Smith number. So that'll be kind of cool. But he really could come in and be a solid player. He went to South Carolina. He played against top competition there. He held his own. You know, he's gonna come in and probably just be a real solid back up to Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith. The other guys that he's competing against, you know, um, Garvin and you know, Ramsey, I just, I think and Agmar is going to be able to come in and kind of s- steal that like third or fourth spot at least as outside linebacker this year. So could easily play 300 to 400 snaps, and um, and that's, that's huge for a rookie. So another guy, seventh rounder, who I think – also, you know, I hate to be so optimistic about all these guys, but Packers really drafted well. They really did. They went out and got the best guy in positions of need, and really things fell to them kind of in a way that I didn't expect at all. You know, I did a lot of mock drafts and different situations and everything, and 
none of it came out actually as good as how the Packers actually drafted, unless I did some crazy thing like trade all of next year's picks or whatever. But, you know, that's something that <laughs> we just may mess around with when we do mocks. So, Tariq Carpenter, he's kind of a hybrid safety linebacker, he's really big, but can move. You know, he's a solid, he, he can play linebacker easily, but the way he moves is like a safety. So he's kind of that in-between, probably be a, a guy that comes out on special teams a lot, you know, punt coverage and, and kickoff coverage and, and whatever. So that's where I look for him to make his first impact. But he is a guy that I think can get on the field in certain situations where you need a hard hitter or somebody that can cover a lot of ground but still not, you know, give up um, a lot of, like, you know, strength and and like wait when it comes to stopping the run up front. So Tariq Ter- Carpenter, you know, he's got Amos and Savage who are going to start. And then behind him is kind of an open Henry Black. I think he went to the Giants, so he's gone. And we don't really, you know, we have Vernon Scott. And then, you know, we have some other, another like an undrafted free agent um, out of Oklahoma State. And then really... Uh, Sean Davis, yeah, so that's that's it. Like, nobody that we've really had do anything. So it's kind of an open position, uh, the third safety, and then even if they keep four safeties, which they might keep, you know, kind of kind of a guy that can do both. So if they do keep four, I, look, I do look for Tyree Carpenter being that, that fourth guy, kind of just that hybrid, and we'll see where they, you know, what positions they um don't keep because they do keep a guy like Tariq Carpenter. Um, I do a 53 man, like way too soon prediction. Uh, check that video out if you want to. Um, I'm gonna do another one as soon as like camp proceeds, and then right before um, they pick, I think, or you know something like that. But anyway, so I like I do look for Tariq Carpenter to um, make the team and at least play some key special team snaps, you know, right away or at least all season. Um, yeah, so then. Like I said, there's three receivers we got in the draft. Uh, a second rounder that's you know almost like a first round, like a late, 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 late first rounder, and then uh, the fourth rounder Dobbs, and then Samari Tor with this the uh, seventh rounder. He went to Montana. He went to Nebraska. He actually was really productive in Montana on special teams and doing all kinds of other things for them. If you can imagine, he was probably you know the best player on their the team there. So he. Um, you know, he was utilized in so many different ways. And then Nebraska kind of used, used them the same way, but against better competition and all those other things and, you know, be- better players on his team. So he's the guy that, you know, at six one, he's a lot bigger than people think. And then special teams, like I said, and his ability to run routes and kind of just, you know, be a gamer and his, he, he's got pretty pretty good speed. So I look for him to kind of contribute here and there, maybe a gunner position sometimes, or if he can, you know, tackle. But at 6'1", I feel like he's just an athlete. Um, We could ask him to pretty much do anything, and I think he could do it. So it'll be interesting to see if the Packers keep seven receivers. If they do, obviously, Tor would be likely one of them. Um, He does have, like, some competition with Winfrey and, and Taylor, but... It's kind of, um, you know, the Packers drafted Tor, so if he does pro- produce, they're going to likely keep him. So I do look for that. I'm excited about th- those guys. Like I said, Dobbs and Agbar, Carpenter, Tor, they're all guys that, you know, they're not going to be starters like the first three or guys that are on the field as much, but they're guys that can really contribute. And um, I'm just, I just so excited about how the Packers drafted, and I think that with the, the combination of veterans and, you know, and Aaron Rodgers and these young guys that are hungry and now they're, you know, so much so much talent. I just think it's shaping up to be something special. And then the final two guys who are guys who, you know, likely probably won't make the team. If the Packers keep 10 offense alignment, which 10 is a lot, 9's kind of a lot, 8's kind of like where you want to be, 9 you know, is kind of where I thought they'd be if when they if they have questions about Bach and Jenkins. But 10, that means that they're keeping Rasheed Walker. You know, Penn, he went to Penn State, he played left tackle, but he's coming off a knee injury. He's a big man, and, um, you know, he's probably going to be like a practice squad guy. He needs some time to develop, but 
he is big. He can play tackle. So there's, that's something to watch. I don't think if he did get put on a practice squad that another team would pick him up. So he's something to watch. Kind of a you know a project piece and it's something that down the down you know down the years and in the future we might be able to see him get on the field. But uh, still a good pick. Just you know late seventh rounder for the Packers. Get a guy that you could turn into something special. You, you never know really. So and then. The other guy who I think actually could make the team, he's 6'5", 338 pounds, a massive, massive man. Jonathan Ford out of Miami. He's kind of, you know, a TJ Slayton type player, just, you know, the big run stopper, kind of just solid in the middle, just, you know, the immovable object. But with, you know, Kenny Clark and Devontae White and, you know, Dean Lowry and then... Um, TJ Slayton, like I just said, Jonathan Ford's probably going to be the odd man out. But at that size, if he's able to, you know, kind of produce a little bit or show the show the coaches something, he has a chance to make the squad. Um, it'll be interesting, you know. So I I do like I just like the fact that you know he's he's a guy at a position of need for the Packers. When we were draft, like before the draft, you know, now we're we're kind of set with Jared Reed and Devontae Wyatt and and like Dean Lowry, so and T.J. Slayton, so it's pretty stacked. I mean, you know, Jonathan Ford's got you know his work cut out for him, but it's a guy that can come in and just you know his presence will be known. It's six five three thirty eight, so something to watch for. I'm excited about all these rookies. Um, yeah, like Rasheed Walker, he's gonna. <laughs> I always laugh when I read that name because the basketball, but. He's he could really be um, be kind of a diamond in the rough. The Packers also got a guy, Caleb Jones, I think is his name. He's like six nine three, whatever sixty offensive lineman. I saw videos like I'm always the biggest person everywhere I go, so I couldn't believe it. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of really talented offensive linemen. So guys like Rasheed Walker and. And um, even other, you know, other guys might not make make the squad just because they they need people at other positions. They can't just keep all these offensive linemen. We'll see how it all plays out. I'm excited. Packers report um, Friday, and I cannot wait to see how it all goes down. It should be a really fun time. Then, like I said, the um, the veterans and everybody shows up on Wednesday at the 27th, and then. It begins for real. So can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys there. And check me out in the next video. Peace.